Hey everyone, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. In this video, we're going to follow along my first scratch built project. Now, the reason I'm building this is because I entered a contest that's being sponsored by a Space 1999 Facebook page. It's called Space 1999 Props and Ships. Now, obviously, the contest requires that you build something related to the TV show. The problem is I've run out of Space 1999 kits here in my garage. So, as I gave it some thought, I ran across uh, these pictures online. And uh, this is actually a project that was built by a gentleman named Alex Jackson. And he's the guy who produces the stun gun kits and the comlock kits that I featured on my channel just recently. And you can see here he's built a building that resembles uh, something from the model that they used on a television show. So, um, as I looked at this, I thought I could do something like that. And, um, but I wanted to go a little bit beyond this and construct something that uh, was a little different. So let me just show you what I have in mind. Okay, so on Moonbase Alpha, they have these tanks that are part of the Moonbase's defense, and they were featured on a couple different episodes. And I remember as I was watching that TV show, I used to wonder where they would come from, where they would house these tanks. And that's my idea here. So imagine that they have these buildings that would be scattered strategically uh, throughout the base and um, there would be an underground complex where the tanks were housed and maintained and when they needed them they would um, be able to come up on this platform that was rotating and then the tanks would come out from this hangar and proceed to wherever they were headed. So essentially this is my sketch here this is the idea is that it would be a building like this with an opening and I imagine uh, at least what I envision actually is having the um, uh, hangar lit from the inside uh, maybe with red lights and um, yeah, it would include uh, this little window here on the side and the detailing that uh, would make it look like the um, buildings that you see here. Now let me just show you what I have in mind for the interior. So I imagine that the inside would look something like this. Um, this is kind of inspired by the um, pictures I've seen of the set that they built for the um, Eagles. Um, there are a couple episodes that featured these intricate models that showed the Eagles being moved from one location to the next. Um, it was essentially the hangar that they were maintained in. And so it kind of looked like that. The walls would be somewhat uh, detailed in that fashion. And uh, of course it, you'd have the circular pad here and I plan to paint and detail the pad so it looks kind of like something you'd see on the Eagle landing pad. And the other thing that I think would be cool to add would be a control booth. Now you can imagine something like this would be uh, or could be controlled uh, from somewhere else but I don't know I just thought it'd be cool to add a little booth here and uh, the booth would have like maybe a um, something that it would support it here that would be like an elevator shaft uh, in which a technician would come up from underground and come into the booth that way um, and I think I could scrounge up some parts that could serve as these um, control panels or maybe a computer here uh, and again it would be adjacent to this window so you could look out onto the surface of the moon. So I think also we could position some lights here uh, one would be um, above the booth that would shine down on the figure that I'd have standing there and maybe a couple lights here that would shine down onto the tank. And the LEDs would be red in color. I think that makes sense because it would help with dark adaption as the tank drove out onto uh, the moon surface. Okay, so that's the plan. So let me just show you what materials I've gathered now to get this project started. Okay, so what kind of supplies would we need? Well, we'd have to have styrene plastic to serve as the walls, and that's what this stuff is here. Made by Evergreen Scale Models. This is uh, 0.4 uh, inches thick, and it comes with two sheets. So I bought a couple packages of this. And for the side detailing, I just purchased more pieces from Evergreen Scale Models. Uh, this, for example, is a 6.3 by 6.3 millimeter uh, strip of plastic that you can, of course, trim. And they will serve as these uh, square types of uh, strips here. And uh, just a few more odds and ends, you know, just kind of like uh, these uh, semicircular uh, styrene strips here. And then I actually already had a bunch of other things from Evergreen um, in, my, um, in my drawer. So let's just go ahead and get started. So the first thing I did was actually construct a cardboard model. Uh, this is a crude example of what we're going to be building here. And, um, you know, it just serves as a guide uh, to be sure that uh, the dimensions are correct and that the tank's going to fit inside and so forth. So now we're ready to get started. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is cut the styrene sheet here to the proper dimensions. And uh, if you've not worked with this sort of stuff, it's not too complicated. Now, when you cut this, you don't actually have to cut all the way through. All you need to do is make a cut uh, along the plastic, 
and um, to separate it you just simply bend it uh, and it'll snap right along the line that you drew there with your knife. see we can just separate it by simply going along the cut that we made there like so okay so to design our exterior walls now and uh, add the detailing here it's just a matter of just trimming these things and just gluing them into place and uh, so I'm just using this as a pattern I'm just going to um, see what I come up with here I'm not going to try to match this exactly but uh, I also by the way have some odds and ends in fact, let me just show you. I have a whole drawer full of that sort of stuff right here. And these are just odds and ends that came from just different models I've had over the years. And um, so there's just a lot of bits and pieces here that we can use to help with our detailing. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. And first thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and start cutting this stuff here. And then we'll just lay them into place. And I will show you my progress here. Um, shortly and you can see now this is our back wall so let's go ahead and get started okay one thing i wanted to show you that's been helpful with this project is uh, i have this cutting box here that has a ridge on one side that you can put it up against the desktop for support and uh, it's made for just cutting uh, different pieces here and you can just um, use it for example with this post uh, just lay it up against the edge here and just saw it through okay and that's all I'm doing is cutting them at different lengths here so that we can lay them down along our styrene piece of plastic and create a pattern like you see again here with this example. Here's our blank piece of styrene plastic and after laying down our different odds and ends here it looks like this. So you see it looks uh, again similar to this we're using this as a pattern and you can see it uh, turned out fairly well. Alright, so let me just go ahead and do the other walls and I'll show you those when I'm done. Okay, so here we now have all four of them complete. You can see the side walls here, as well as the one that's going to house the door. So the fun part of this is just trying to find odds and ends that will fit into your creation. And uh, so really I just found these uh, pieces here in my junk drawer. And uh, they seem to go quite well with the uh, detailing here. So now the next thing to do is to plan out the interior. So the first step was to install these beams here and I still have uh, two others to do. Uh, but essentially each of the four corners is going to have this beam here that will provide surface area so that when we put our walls together we'll be able to apply our glue here and uh, provide better support. Then the other thing I'm planning out is how to detail the interior walls. I'm going to put some detailing in there as well. And then I'm going to take advantage of this window and create a booth there for a technician to stand in. I've already started construction of the booth. This is the floor that will fit up against this corner right here. Okay, and then uh, this is the uh, window, the observation window. And then uh, this piece of equipment here came from actually a Jupiter 2 model. Uh, I did not build out the lower section of my Jupiter 2, so it left me with a lot of uh, odds and ends there. And uh, this uh, equipment looks like it fit in quite nicely. And as for the technician, I'm going to be using this guy here. And he's a leftover piece from the Land of the Giants model. Um, so he looks to be the right scale. And uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and paint him into the appropriate uniform. And so there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed on here and show you my progress here shortly.